the 2002 Olympic Games, the Mormon Church, and Mitt Romney. What's the state of Utah? <laughs> Today we're, not- we're visiting the great state of Utah. <laughs> right. What's the most LGBTQ plus friendly and affordable city in Utah? This is Crew Money episode number 395, and you're about to find out. <laughs> now on with the show. The mission of Queer Money is to financially empower the LGBTQ plus community. Join us in thanking Capital One for supporting that mission. So folks, <laughs> when we get to a state like Utah, like we did with Wyoming and all the comments that we got on YouTube and TikTok and uh, and uh, Instagram. Instagram around the videos that we did for that state, everybody's like, ah, no, no, way. I would never go there. We wanted to revisit the metrics that we use as to why or how we select the various cities in each state. And remember, we're covering each state, every single one of them. Even the ones you don't like. (laughs) (laughs) Or you would never think of going to. It's a 50 state analysis. (laughs) This one is this state. I I truly think that Utah is a surprise state. Yeah. Um, So first, a quick recap. Um, We use basically six metrics uh, for coming up with our ranking. The first thing that we use, and it's overweighted, um, is the Municipal Equality Index that HRC came out with in 2022. So they rank or give an index for uh, a bunch of different cities, not every city, but a bunch of different cities. Then we also use two uh, factors from Zillow. Zori and Zivi, which are the rent, uh, basic rent uh, values or costs of rent and housing. Uh, And then we use income, both median income, which means 50% above and 50% below. It's right there in the middle. And then average, which can be skewed towards the top, especially if there's lots of wealthy people living in that area or earning in that area. And then finally, we use bestplaces.net cost of living index. So you get a real picture about what the other things are that may cost uh, or be affordable and not affordable in that particular city. Things like uh, food, housing, or no housing. Well, actually housing, housing, housing isn't uh, housing, uh, shopping, things like that. Utilities, all those kinds of things are thrown into the cost of living index. Exactly. And this being the Queer Money podcast, what we're doing with this analysis is we're coupling LGBTQ plus friendliness with affordability and cost of living. Um, There may be other variables that are of concern to you. And if that's the case, we totally get it. Uh, We highly encourage you to to take our answers, the winners as well as the runner up, and then do a deeper dive into the metrics that might be uh, important to you, whether that's veteran services, black or people of color inclusion, women's issues, disability, whatever. We understand that there's a lot of variables of concern for the community. What we're trying to do that's unique with this analysis that we think is unique about this analysis is that most um, lists that you go to for the best place to visit or the best place to live for gay people, LGBTQ plus people, tends to be predominantly reliant on the type of nightlife they have. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> I mean, Some of them do take into account other variables, but more often than not, it's just um, there's a lot of gay people there and they have an amazing nightlife. And they have LGBTQ plus coffee shops and there's a lot of theater. Those are all important to us too, but very often the winning cities or locations for those various lists always tend to be the most expensive places that people can afford to live. Mm -hmm. Um, So we're trying to help you stretch your dollar further, um, but also find a place that hopefully uh, is LGBTQ inclusive. Again, as we said at the outset of the series, that is relative, right? So affordability in California is relative and LGBTQ plus friendliness in the state of Wyoming is yes, going to be relative. (laughs) Right. And, and folks just to to remind you, um, we will not have the right answer for, any one of you, because this the right answer, <laughs> right? The right answer is is unique for every single individual, and that's why when we post uh, information about a great city to live in for LGBT people is New York, people are like, "Well, that's not affordable," and it's the same reason why people excoriated us over Laramie, Wyoming, because it's not LGBT fr- friendly. It just happens to be the most LGBT friendly c- city in Wyoming. I would argue, well, I you know, we're very early on in this analysis, my guess is that there's no Goldilocks for our community anywhere in the country. And I think if we probably did an even deeper dive, there's probably no Goldilocks place to live in the entire country unless you're cis white 
ma- straight male. Yes, exactly. <laughs> okay. So we'll let's take, get on with you. Taking all those salts, <laughs> grains of salt into account. Rubbing them in, into our, our wounds here. <laughs> David, <laughs> so, who is the honorable mention? Right. Our runner up. Our runner up is actually probably the city that most people would think that they would go to in uh, in Utah, and that is Salt Lake City. From our experience, we visited Salt Lake City, and to be honest, and this was in 2021. Yeah, um, during the pandemic. During the pandemic, we went there, uh, and we think that it is the gayest city in America right now, Yeah, um, simply because... As you drive around in the core part of Salt Lake City, in the downtown area and neighboring uh, uh, the neighborhoods just adjacent to downtown, there are queer flags, whether it's a gay flag, a trans flag, a progressive tri- pl- pride flag, um, binary, non-binary flag. There are queer flags everywhere. 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 It was surprising. <laughs> right. Exactly. And we, we, we ended up going into a little boutique shop, you know, where they sell like books and trinkets and stuff like that. All the stuff that you want to spend a ton of money on. Um, and the woman uh, the, who owned the store had a, a progressive pride flag up. And then David actually asked her, like, there seems to be like a huge, like, prevalence of queerness all all throughout the city and why is that and she basically said that that well everywhere you look from the city you can see the mormon tabernacle right so the the, the mormon church has a huge presence over the city right. already um and it's it's sort of the they kind of have a yin and yang there in the city where it's great we're, we're accepting of the fact that you're all mormon and you've got your your christian values but you're not going to overshadow us uh, and try to uh, uh, erase us from the community so that it's sort of, sort of a i thought it was pretty interesting it's, right it's, yeah it's, it's maybe a a, a, a a prescription that other locations want to follow to try to get along with everybody. Right. I think that what she really kind of pointed out was that they wanted to prove to the LGBTQ community that they are also a welcoming uh, city to those individuals. Tired of all the credit card offers you get from your current credit scoring app? Download CreditWise by Capital One today to avoid them. So why is uh, why is uh, Salt Lake City um, at the, at its a runner up, John. I'm sorry. Evidently, he's supposed to be saying this, not me. He doesn't see my notes. <laughs> so Salt Lake is the runner up. Well, predominantly because it's the only city in Utah to get a 100 on HRC's MEI index. So um, it's the, the most LGBTQ plus, most uh, yeah, most LGBTQ plus inclusive city. Um, the problem is, is that also makes it one of the more expensive cities in Utah. Right. Um, so maybe, so not necessarily the most affordable. Um, it's not the most expensive when it comes to rent. Uh, Provo and St. George are the most expensive um, cities when it comes to rent in Utah, uh, but <laughs> the difference is only $11. So probably not going to break anybody's bank. That's about an hour of work for a lot of people or less. Um, so uh, that's, you know, that's marginal. Um, it's the most expensive in Utah for home values and for cost of living. Uh, and th- that cost of living will definitely maybe eat, er- slowly o- erode away your purchasing power. Um, and we want to make sure that you feel like you have solid purchasing power wherever we recommend you to go. Uh, the median and ha- uh, median household income is number two for the state, and the average household income is number three for the state. So, um, probably a great opportunity to to earn some money, um, but again, the cost of living can be kind of egregious. Yeah, exactly. Anything else to say about that, David? No, I think you said it all. Oh, thanks. I did a great <laughs> job. Why don't you share with the, our audiences who the winner is? The winner is Ogden. <laughs> it's just a thirty-five minute trip up the road from Salt Lake City. Um, and and it's kind of, uh, it, this is a state where it's interesting that where the concentration of people are at is actually where there's actually somewhat of affordability when it comes to um, cost of living and, uh, and uh, household income, there seems to be a little bit of a balance, uh, more of a balance there in, than maybe some other states. So why is it a winner? Well, it's also the city that has the highest average income. Uh, so uh, at, se- at $74,000. And then it also has the highest median household income. So really, this is really pulling it. You want to earn up. some money. Yeah. <laughs> it, when, in the state, of, in the state of Utah, right? Um, it is, uh, its cost of living is on par with the national average. I think it was 99.5 compared to a 100. So it's basically Pretty the same, there, yeah. right? 
Um, home values were kind of right in the middle. Rent uh, it comes in at 1722 Um, It was actually the one that was $11 cheaper. So if you can afford that $11, go. <laughs> right. It was $11 uh, more, uh, cheaper than uh, than Salt Lake City. Um, oh, actually, no, it wasn't. Uh, it was, I think that its rents were tied with Salt Lake City, mm-hmm. um, which kind of makes sense. They, they are relatively close yeah. cities. Um, it did come in number two uh, for uh, HRC's Municipal Equality Index, although it got a 58 out of 100, which is pretty a low. little concerning. Yeah. yeah. So the reasons for that is that it's a uh, city is doesn't have any trans inclusive benefits. The city, um, the city itself, not necessarily the proprietors uh, or the the public businesses. Um, there are no contractor non discrimination ordinances uh, in the city of Ogden, and it has. But however, it does have an openly LGBTQ plus elected official. Right. It does. It has, it ha, has had has several, had. I think it currently does and has had several LGBTQ uh, elected officials. So this is the prime example of when we're trying to balance both affordability and, and inclusion with the state of Utah specifically here. Um, you're going to have to give up a little bit of inclusion. You might not necessarily see as many pride flags or uh, uh, or LGBTQ friendly queer flags, um, but it is a little bit more affordable than Salt Lake City. Um, that said, we did do a little bit of homework uh, about what may other things that make Ogden great for LGBTQ plus people, and we found some great things to consider. Yeah, so it is the home of Weber University, which has a large participation in the local pride in local pride events, and um, has a LGBT. Uh, Q student group. So it's, uh, it, that the university itself, I think is an attractor. A lot of times when we see these kind of LGBTQ plus friendly cities in, uh, in red States, oftentimes it's because they're anchored by a larger university. Yeah. Yeah. It's close to the Wasatch mountain range and apparently has an amazing food scene. Uh, it's great for outdoors. If it's anything like Colorado, it's obviously it's great for outdoors. It's got a historical downtown. And, um, from the research I did find, um, David, I, uh, we've been all over Utah. We've actually been to St. George a couple of times and been to Salt Lake City. Um, we haven't been to Ogden, uh, but from the research I did find did say that there are a, uh, a decent number of, of LGBTQ plus friendly flags throughout the city uh, and a lot of LGBTQ plus people, maybe not necessarily to the degree of Salt Lake City, um, but there's still a presence there. Yeah. And they have their pride August 4th through August 6th. So, uh, and that's this year, that's this this year's, uh, pride. Um, and they have, uh, other pride the city itself. Um, the city's pride organization hosts other events such as coffee and queers and youth out, uh, reach, uh, on certain nights of the month. So there's activity for the queer community, especially for younger folks. It looks like. Absolutely. So congratulations, Ogden and Salt Lake City. Start your journey to financial independence with a checking and savings account that doesn't nickel and dime you with fees. Get a Capital One 360 checking or a 360 performance savings account at Capital One today. Thank you again for listening to another episode of the podcast on next week's bonus episode, which happens on Thursdays. We're covering the most affordable gay-friendly city in the state of Texas. Yeehaw! Steers and queers. <laughs> if you'd like to see the results of all the cities in each state that we're analyzing, please go to queermoneypodcast.com forward slash cities or click the link in your podcast player for our growing analysis. Thank you and have a great weekend. 